This and other presentations is my avenue to disseminate evidence against individuals who murdered my father and those who have actively participated in covering up the murder. Today, I'm going to concentrate on those firearms I surrendered to the police and those which are still missing. Under normal circumstances, the firearms would have been surrendered in an orderly manner without complication. Instead, the firearms went missing and Eileen Cantor accused me of stealing one of the handguns. She was willing to call 911, lie to the police without fear of prosecution. This above-the-law attitude is directly tied to her connections at Queens County DA, especially Audra Bierman. Being interrogated by six to eight policemen regarding the whereabouts of the gun and having a flashlight shined in my eyes to see whether my eyes would dilate or not, as opposed to Eileen Kent for not being questioned, is not something I'm willing to accept. This is apart from her slowly drugging my father to death. Yes, I have that evidence. But the Queens DA wants no part of this case. People in that office know this scandal of a, is of epic proportions. Regardless, Queens County, New York, if you know the right people, evidence is disregarded and accusations are considered gospel. Melinda Katz, where are you? Wake up. These are the missing handguns. They all had loaded magazines and are semi-automatic. I was accused of stealing the gun on the left, which is a 25 caliber Beretta. It's a problem for me because I have a stigma out there that I may have a handgun. They are unregistered, unlicensed. And this is New York City. And it gets worse. If you look on the left-hand side, you could see a text that my father sent me. He never really figured out how to use texting, but for whatever reason, he sent me his social security number. I didn't even know this until he called me into his bedroom and said, don't use my social security number. Well, I'm dumbfounded, but okay, I won't do it. I walk out of the room. Next thing I know, he's accusing me of buying a handgun over the internet using his social security number. This is what Eileen Canfer convinced him that I did. He then calls the attorney up, the estate attorney, essentially Eileen Canfer's attorney. And I hear the attorney say, I will never admit to it. Admit to what? Buying a gun on the internet? Did he ask to see the evidence? There is no evidence because you can't do it. Now, if you look at the upper middle quadrant, you'll see that that's my closet. You'll also see Eileen Canfer has the doors open, is searching through my belongings. I also have video, but there's no need to show a video here because you should be able to see what she was doing. If you look on to the right, you'll notice there are bullets. Those bullets were found in my closet. I found them and I searched my closet after my father's aide said, you should look through your things, I don't trust her. On the bottom of the slide, you'll see there's a pump pistol which shoots BBs. One day while I was looking for the $160,000 in cash that was stolen by my sister Marisa Silver and Eileen Canfer, we came across the pistol. My father immediately wanted to go to his balcony and try it out. Neither his aide nor I would open up the sliding door. The situation got so bad that my father threatened to shoot his aide. Well, Joseph Rosenberg, the attorney, somehow got his hands on the, on the pistol, and my father asked for it back. Can you believe this? Joseph Rosenberg returned the gun. My father is the last person who should have access to any type of firearm. I'm hiding kitchen knives, and this guy does this. But when my father called Rosenberg and wanted to make an $18,000 adjustment, on his will, Rosenberg ignored him. That's a fact. I called the police on July 11th, 2021 because I didn't think my father was gonna make it out of LIJ. He subsequently died on July 19th, 2021. You can see the police came up and we discussed the guns. They took all the ammo, but they left the rifle. Two minutes later, they called back, so they wanted to take the rifle and the Thompson, which you can see in the video. It was uneventful other that they were going to leave the rifle and then someone told them do not leave any firearm in the apartment, even a replica. Fine, it doesn't matter to me. As I was saying, nothing good comes out of me having guns. I'm already unfortunately on the shit list. I will be the first one to admit this is such an unlikely story that you have to suspend any skepticism or cynicism you have and just accept the facts as they are as if you were on a jury. Push it 
I mean, even this is technically like no good. I mean, I looked up these things. The, the, right, the pistol. Air pistol in New York City, New York State. It's we're just in the, we're just in the border. You're right on the border. You go so I should have been over there on the other side of Lakeville. Yeah, if you go on the other side, it's completely illegal. All right, I'm, you know, I'm not, like I said, you got the ammo now. So, you know what? He's 90 years old. He grew up. You know, it's not like I have. I mean, I spent a lot of time in Florida. It's not like I have shotguns. I have, you know, and. Uh, Mm -hmm. But I know nothing helps. This doesn't work well. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't want to... It just doesn't work well. And I don't need it because I, you know, I don't need it with what's been going on here. That's uh, way No, no, no. I want to need this for you. I'm going to make a I should have waited till I got, oh, because you don't get the money back to the bullets, right? You know how they have that. Uh, mm. No, you don't. Yeah. I, no, 10 cents a bullet. No. Yeah. But that's it. So you're gone, you're good. And, uh, thank you for coming up. Have a good day. So what were you saying, Belch or something? Actually, I, I did it. You pulled the chamber back. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to uh, do what's called the mouth. Explain how you can get it back and yeah, we just want to sell it when there's no point to keep it. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, so you pull the change back. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's interesting. The rest of the part. Yeah, so you pull the change back. Yeah. This is going to go in some of the house, I know that. Okay. Is there anything else? No. No, there's pieces of art. But you know what? You know what? You know, it's, it's nice. And it's nice to have, but it, it, what's the downside? What's the upside? To having it, right. It's only it's only downside, and I don't need it. We're talking what to do right now. Right. You know, hospital, you know, pull right, right. the respirator, the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying. So it's sort of that's why I'm calling now. Because he's not. I don't think he's coming back. And mm -hmm. you know, if, you know, even if it's in his mind and he can't figure out where he is, I don't know. It's the kind of thing he'll pick. Like the evidence, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right? That you, you yeah, so like if anybody accuses you of stealing, you just say, no, I have proof, I did it to the police. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, All right, guys. Uh, All right. Well, yeah, I was painless, so I appreciate that. Thank you, Tony.